Hi, my name is Aaron Saigo, and I'm the lead developer on the Plasma project. Plasma is a very flexible and highly powerful system for creating primary user interfaces, such as a desktop workspace shell, as you can see here, uh, which looks like a very traditional one with icons on the desktop and a panel uh, on the bottom with a taskbar, etc. Or a media player interface, such as seen in Amarok 2, which uses Plasma, uh, or say the interface on a small form factor device, such as a mobile internet device. What you see here looks a lot like a traditional desktop, but it's really just one of the possibilities with Plasma. I just zoomed out to show more of what is going on in my computer right now. And Plasma provides a canvas where widgets live on, uh, live on. I have three collections of widgets right now. And I've just zoomed into this one here, which has the uh, default background on KD 4.1 and 4.2, as well as our uh, folder view containment, which allows you to look at the contents of any folder um, in a box, and you can actually make as many of these as you want and have them point at different uh, directories. Um, it gives you basically a little file manager directly on your desktop. These aren't windows, these are actually living on the canvas itself. So as you notice, when I mouse in and out over top of it, I get a little control handle that animates nicely in and out. The animation is part of what Plasma provides as well. I can freely rotate, move, and resize items on the canvas. And that is anything on the canvas, be it a clock or uh, something as complicated as a desktop uh, or as a, as a folder view. But we can do more than just the traditional desktop things with Plasma. Um, obviously we have a nice little clock here. Um, which I'll make a little bit bigger. Over here we actually have a web browser that's embedded directly onto the canvas as well. It's using WebKit to render. So I'll go to the kd.org website. And because using WebKit we get nice things such as the ability to scale the page up or down. We can of course also resize this page and rotate it just like any other widget. Now I'm going to zoom back out here and I'm going to pan over to this set of widgets over here, this activity. And we can do a lot of uh, configuration if we wish of the, con of the containment of the activity. We can say what kind we want, we can give it a name. So we actually name our activities which gives us the ability to create a context um, for things. And the contents of widgets can actually reflect uh, what the uh, the name that we've given it. So if we associate people on our contact list, for instance, with a certain uh, activity name, then the widget can actually adapt itself to that. Um, of course, we can do traditional things such as set wallpapers and whatnot. These widgets are kind of interesting because they actually are all, all have one thing in common, and that is they use online services. This is an RSS feeder, which uh, reads online news. And you see it's nicely animated as well. This uh, looks up uh, words on the uh, from dictionaries on the internet. And this is my Twitter account. So I can make uh, Twitters right from my desktop here and have them posted online. The way that this works is that each one of these widgets is a separate plugin. And these widgets tend to get fed data from what we call a data engine. I'm looking at the Plasma Engine Explorer, which is a development tool we have to look at these different engines. And the different data engines give us access to uh, data in a way that's separate from the visualization. We have quite a large number of engines available. I'm looking right now at the power management engine, which gives me information about my battery, uh, the AC adapter state, what kind of sleep states I can do, um, etc. And this is actually used to populate the uh, battery information right here. So you can also access services from here. So if I go to the Twitter engine, which is what this widget's using right here, and I'm going to manually ask for my timeline. And right now you notice it doesn't show my timeline at all, but I can get the associated service with that entry 
in the engine. And so here's the authentication operation. And I can put in my password, start the operation, and uh, this will actually cause it to authenticate against the online service. So services are uh, part and parcel of the, the Plasma design, as well as keeping the separation between data and representation. So while we have these different engines giving us access to the data, we can create all kinds of visualizations. In fact, for the RSS feeder, we actually have a simpler one that's much, uh, much more plain and simple, um, more utilitarian, but they use the exact same data engine in the background so that we didn't have to code any of this over again. Uh, data engines are implicitly shared between widgets as well, so we get really good performance as far as memory savings and whatnot. So we're able to create widgets with very little effort, um, be able to parallelize and separate the design process from the actual core coding process. This is a really key feature for uh, Plasma when you're trying to um, create new things with it. Uh, we also provide uh, with the Plasma Suite something called runners which allow us to search for um, all kinds of things. So I might be looking for a word processor and I can just type in Word and it'll actually give me openoffice.org's word processor because that's a keyword associated with it. Or I could look for spreadsheets or I could look for music. Um, it'll actually also search the files on my disk if I have it. I can look at uh, people, uh, look for people in my address book. So there's someone that I can, if I click on that, it would start uh, an email um, to that person. So this gives us a very nice task oriented, um, intelligent command line, if you will. And with that, we actually have plugins as well. We have a number of different runners that do all sorts of things, um, from looking through your your uh, web browser history or bookmarks to controlling the uh, the power management, so you can log out or change your power profile. It's very very powerful and modular as well. So. With Plasma, these widgets, as well as the engines and services that drive them, um, even the wallpapers themselves, they're all plugins. And you can write these plugins in something like C++ if you wish. Um, you can also write them in ECMAScript, which is the uh, the language behind JavaScript. You can write them using HTML and CSS uh, and JavaScript if you wish. You can also uh, write them in Python or Ruby, and they get installed. The nice thing about these scripted ones is that we can actually deliver them over the network. So if I go to add widgets, I can install new widgets and I can download from the internet, and we can actually control where these widgets come from. Um, we also support the ability to uh, to sign the widgets and, and check the, the GPG signature. So um, as you can see we've got quite a number of widgets already available. Um, there's somewhere over a hundred uh, Plasma widgets currently available. But we're not limited to just native Plasma widgets either. We can uh, also put uh, Edja content which is the Enlightenment 17 libraries, uh, the Canola media player engine uses them and we can actually place content done with uh, on that framework directly on the Plasma Canvas. We can also put Google gadgets as well as Mac OS X uh, widgets. In fact this Hello World guy right here in my Add Widgets listing is uh, a Mac OS X dashboard widget. Um, to the user it looks absolutely no different. It just integrates directly like any other Plasma widget. So this kind of touches the surface of what's possible um, uh, with Plasma. Uh, with the model view system that we have, where we've got basically a canvas with widgets on it, we can f create interfaces for all kinds of devices, be they televisions or netbooks or laptops or handheld devices or what have you, and even different kinds of devices as far as uh, what the tasks that they're, they're aimed at or designed for. So I hope this gives you a quick idea and uh, overview of what Plasma is all about. Um, feel free to, uh, to email me as well if you have any further questions. Take care.